It's your boy Cinema Dude today, talking about some Five Nights at Freddy's. Now, as of today, October 12th, we are 15 days away from the movie, everyone. And to celebrate today, I will be talking about my Five Nights at Freddy's movie wish list and what I want to be see happening in this movie. Now, let's go ahead and start. I feel like the hour 50 minute runtime they've revealed that is official at this point, that is confirmed. I feel like that's a pretty solid runtime for this movie, especially with rewatching Willy's Wonderland and seeing how much they have accomplished in an hour and a half. I feel like this movie could pull off a similar animatronic story, but it'll be a little bit different. Next thing, I really want to see a use of the endoskeleton in this movie, like in Five Nights at Freddy's Ruin or Security Breach, you know what I'm talking about, like where they're right behind you, but if you turn around, th they move while you're not looking, I want to see a scene with that happen with Mike, since we know they're going to be in the movie, and we even saw them in the phone numbers promotional material, which I'm not even going to lie, that phone number thing is really cool, so, yeah, speaking of phones, phone guy for the scott coffin voice cameo i really want to see phone guy show up as that but it does not look like that will be happening anytime soon because of because of um like reasons like in the trailers we've seen that there's another security guard that worked there before mike showing us that scott coffin will not be our phone guy but we know who will could be a possible cameo for Scott Coffin. And that could be the guy in the background of some of the materials. We could see him in possibly a flashback, one of the training tapes, because we see someone working on an animatronic. We don't know if that's Henry, Emily, or not. Now, that's the next thing I want to see. I want to see a decent amount of William Afton. I want to see some good flashbacks of him, even though they'd have to do the whole de-aging thing, which would be slightly annoying. But I want to see some good flashbacks of William Afton, all right? I want to see him and Henry Emily feuding over some stuff, and I really want that to be a good scene. The other thing, speaking of... William Afton, I want the spring lock scene, because we know it's going to happen. Spring trap is in the movie. And how, how do you get spring trap? You have to get spring locked. So, I want the spring lock scene to be as good as you can make it for a PG-13 movie. Alright? I want the spring lock scene to be as horrifying as you can do it. Because you can do stuff horrifying and gruesomely PG-13 I want them to, like, give us some, like, context. Because I saw what they did to Blue Beetle. I know it's weird that I'm bringing this in comparison. But in the Blue Beetle movie, uh, if you don't know, whenever Jaime is suiting up, they have this kind of, like, horrifying little sequence of that melting his body. I want us to still be horrified by the entire spring lock sequence but not be too bloody because it is a PG-13 movie, if you remember. Because if this was rated R, the spring lock scene would be 20 times higher for me. Next thing I want to talk about, cameos. Now, you guys want to see cameos from, like, later day characters. I know you do. But the most realistic characters we're going to get if we're following the timeline of the games are the security puppet and balloon boy, which we know will... If it's following the lore of the games, Balloon Boy could be a cool background character or a tiny little chase sequence. And the puppet has been there since the original restaurant, which we know they'll probably do a Fred Bear's Family Diner. Since there was a, uh, since there's Golden Freddy and Spring Bonnie. So we obviously know that there will be a Fred Bear's Family Diner scene in the movie, and that's another thing. If they do tackle the Bot of 87, which they're changing things up a little bit, they might. I don't know how they're going to do that. The more I think about it, like, we've seen it happen in the games. If you played the games, you know what the Bot of 87 is. The kid gets gnashed in between the doll jaw because he's crying. But in the movies, I feel like 
Blumhouse is going to surprise us and do something horrifying, but they can't show. It's going to be an off-screen kill if they do dive into the Bite of 87 stuff. But that would be crazy since we know that Golden Freddy's most likely going to be good versus the other ones that are evil with the red eyes. And I've seen a lot of people say that, like, we don't want him to be evil. He doesn't need the red eye. Like, we, we want Golden Freddy to be evil. He He needs... We don't want the blue eyes. That's cringy. I think Golden Freddy being good could actually divide the group and maybe have a good sequence. Because as we know, if it is the same way it is in the games, and that's William Afton's son, William Afton is probably going to show up in the spring lock suit and tr maybe try to fight his own son. I, that's just something I want to see happen. So, if they do dive into the Fred Bear's family diner aspect of it, the two cameos you could pull off is the security puppet and Balloon Boy, which the security puppet would be, like, really cool for, like, the be like a sequence in the movie, like when Mike's trying to get out, but the puppet won't let him out. Obviously, I'm so confused because we've all seen the shot of Mike standing at the door trying to push it open, but then we cut the spring lock Bonnie, but in other... But in the clip that was released, he's trying to open it, and Foxy's doing his infamous run from the video games, which is just something that is constantly memed about in FNAF concerts, which would actually be an entertaining sequence, I'm not even going to lie. But with everything happening, I don't think they're going to put Springtrap right there. I think that'll be Foxy's scene, which I'm excited to see if they do the whole Pirate Cove thing. But yeah, I... Another thing, I want each character to get their own little horrifying sequence, alright? Foxy, sure, he's off to the side, but I think they can make him horrifying. So, yeah, that would be my wish list for the FNAF movie. And I think at the end, maybe, if they're going with a FNAF 2 sequel, which there's rumors of it starting family filming, I'm not going to talk about that just because, like, anonymous accounts put crap all the time, it could just be a rumor... But people know that they're filming Five Nights at Freddy's 2. Or that they're supposed to start in mid-2024, which I'm going to be honest with you guys. I kind of highly doubt it. All right, Early mid-2024, if the strike is over by then, which I hope it is. It's looking like it's probably going to be. Uh, then they can start filming it. But I still feel like that's a little too good to be true. Like FNAF 2 already... And then after FNAF 2, I feel like if they want to play into the second pizzeria with, like, the whole, I don't, the whole targeting systems and, their, and the smart animatronics with the criminal database so nothing ever happens that Henry started, they could take a new approach on it where they try to reopen the place in the future. They can go with the original timeline from the video games. However they do it, I'm excited to see what they do with a brand new, rebooted, fresh start and take on the Five Nights at Freddy's universes. Because we know the game lore is getting a little crazy and confusing. Each game, they update something and change it. And you're like, alright, this is the perfect lore right here. Nothing can be wrong with this. And it turns out we were like way off and we did get everything straightened up. But in the most recent FNAF piece of lore... We are like, introduced something that the bunk, that Five Nights at Freddy's 4 is just a dream simulation. We already knew that, but you're not playing as William Afton's kids. He kidnapped those people. So, it's, it's the whole entire thing as itself in the video games. The lore is so insanely heavy, and there's so much going on that, yeah, it would be a three-hour movie if they tried to dive into everything and just copy the video game beat by beat. But if they just start fresh and start their a brand new thing, go, go on their own and just make their own little FNAF, I think it would work better than the lore that we've been giving in the video game because an hour and a half, I feel like they're going to accomplish a lot more in this video game, and maybe just have a more simple storyline. The others are going to be kids in suits, but I just want them to handle it a little bit more simpler and try to do their own thing instead of just copying the video game beat by beat, which we have the characters from the video game already, like Vanessa, Mike, 
a purple guy, all those people are all in the game. But now, I feel like if they want to do a teaser at the end, they could do, like, a futuristic version of the other Freddy Fazbear's where they build the toy animatronics. So, I really want to see, like, models for the toy, like, like, they're building them at the end of the movie. Or, you know, like, they could have opened a sister location. This movie is going to be so lore heavy. We're just going to have to wait till the movie comes out. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. This is just my wish list for what I want to happen in the Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Well, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.